Not only can these five easy crate games help your dog be more comfortable in their crate, but it's also going to give them the much needed mental stimulation and enrichment for a truly satisfying and fulfilling life. The first one I'd like to do is just start teaching them what the crate means and asking them for a word to get them to go in. And the way I do this is I just sit by the crate and I wait for them to offer the behavior of going inside the crate. This is so easy, but highly effective. So we're going to sit by it. I'm going to sit over here on my paw.com bed, which I love and I'll talk about in a moment. Oh, we're going to wait. Yeah. So she's going to start offering behaviors. Sometimes what I find with luring, which is where I take a treat and put it in the crate to kind of lure her in is it's putting my dog in a position where they're going to do something just because they're highly food motivated, even though they're kind of uncomfortable with it. And I want her to be comfortable with the crate. This is a very slow process. She's not used to me just sitting by the crate. So I'm going to kind of go over here and kind of move around it. What did she's trying to think like, what do you want me to do, mom? Yes, good girl. So as soon as she started going in the crate, I marked it with my marker word, Y-E-S. I'll talk about that in a moment and rewarded her with a treat. The treats I'm using um, are these Becker bites, which I'll share more about that. So we're gonna try it again. You'll notice I'm not asking for anything. I'm just kind of standing by the crate. The, yes, there we go, good job. I'll give a couple treats there. I'm just standing by it with the door wide open. I have a nice, soft, comfy bed in here that she really, really likes, which is very important. And then I start teaching her the release cue. Some people call this free or at ease. And this is where I'm teaching her that when I give that cue is when you can come out of the crate. I never give treats or anything of super high value for coming out, but I do give verbal praise, which is my marker word, Yes. Here's a pro tip. If they continue to stay in the crate on their own like this, I continue to reward. Sometimes it's with food, sometimes it's with verbal praise, sometimes toys, but the key is I want her to offer this behavior on her own and then continue to reward the behavior I want continued. What she's doing here is she's starting to learn, wow, the crate is really comfortable. The crate is fun. Good things happen in the crate. The crate is becoming Disneyland. This next one is super easy and basically free. I just take some of her favorite treats, maybe kibble if you're feeding a dry food, and I get an old towel. I just have a little dish towel here. She's so excited. I take the dish towel and then I scatter. Good weight, Marlo. Oh, 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 okay, that was not. <laughs> you take this dish towel, you scatter in some treats or kibble if that's what you're feeding your dog, roll it up scatter some more and then you just keep rolling up now this next one has to always be supervised in fact anytime i give my dog a toy or a treat i'm always supervising for advanced dogs you can even take this and roll it into a loose knot like so marlo is a little bit more gentle so i like to just leave it like this good girl when she offers to go in her crate on her own i like to give her the towel and let her dig sniff and forage the treats or the kibble out always supervised and in the beginning I do it with the door open. I want her to associate happy times with being in the crate. Now while Marlo finishes this before we go to our next crate game I want to give a pro tip around the crate setup and what crate to use. So all of my favorite crates and dog beds and waterproof blankets and toys for enrichment are all linked on my shop page down below that you can check after this video. But for me it's really important to have a crate where my dog has enough room to stand up turn around and lay down and stretch out a little little bit comfortably. Now for me, in terms of how long I leave my dogs in the crate, they only stay in here for up to four hours at a time before they get a break, ideally only about two to three hours. And I only use a crate with my dogs up into about year one or two of age. Beyond that, I start training them to be outside of the crate. Also, I love making the area outside of the crate really pleasant, and I like to put their dog bed around the crate, like this one here. This is a paw.com bed. Big shout out to paw.com for sponsoring this part of the video. I'm a huge fan of them for a few reasons. One, again, I put the bed around the crate so that when they are laying down, when I'm initially crate training them, they're laying near their crate. So they start to build a positive association and relaxing sensation 
when they're near their crate when their bed's over here. I love their low profile orthopedic pup rug design. I've been using this for years if you've watched me for any length of time. One, because it's a washable, removable cover. So when my dogs have accidents or they get it muddy or dirty, I just throw it in the wash and I'm good to go. I like the low profile because we live in a rental. We don't have a ton of space. So it kind of just looks like a pretty rug. Uh, and for dogs that are nervous or maybe a little bit anxious or they don't like to use dog beds, this is a nice way to just give them something soft to lay on that doesn't require them climbing into something. So I really love this brand. And then in her bed is another paw.com dog bed. Now the reason I like this is if I'm feeding her a particularly messy dog treat or chew that I supervise, this also has a removable washable cover so I can easily take it off, wash it, it's a nice orthopedic, very soft bedding. And then with this crate bed, you can also get it with bolsters as well as a crate cover if your dog likes more of a den atmosphere. Plus it comes in a variety of sizes to fit kind of whatever crate you have. So I like that there's a lot of versatility with this brand. Another cool thing in terms of making the crate area comfortable, secure, safe, is if you have a dog bed that fits in your crate, and you just want something to put over the bed. I love their waterproof, super soft kind of fuzzy blankets that you can lay right over top. That way, if you're gonna feed a raw meaty bone, a bully stick, which gets a little messy, or yak chews that can have little pieces that fall off, this is an easy thing to put under them, contain the mess, the water's not gonna leak through it, and then I just machine wash it when I'm done. And I've just been using this brand for so long, as you all know, so it's really lasted me for a great amount of time, and I've just been so excited to help elevate the really cool, unique things that they're doing. Another game or activity I like to do with Marlo in the crate is give her her high-value treats or even toys in the crate, I always supervise. I never leave my dogs alone in a crate with toys or chews. Please don't do that. Choking hazards are a real issue. Uh, but I could be sitting here watching a Netflix show, for example. My favorite recipe right now has been taking these air dried trachea chews. I stuff it with some wet food, or if you feed a kibble, soak it with a little bit of water first to get it a little soft and stuff it in. And Or pumpkin puree, plain, or you could even do a little bit of goat kefir, which is like a thick, almost goat yogurt with nothing added in it. And then I like to freeze it for 30 minutes to an hour. Then I give it to her and it takes her so long to chew it. It's a great dental chew. And she and I can feed her part of her meal through this because she eats a softer, fresher, Food. I also like to feed her at least one of her meals in the crate or at least near it when she was first getting used to the crate so that she starts to create a positive association here, especially using a puzzle bowl or a slow feeder because then she's getting enrichment and mental stimulation. And what I want her body to learn is when she's in the crate, not only is she getting something of value, but she's starting to get calming, relaxing sensations. And by giving her chews or puzzle bowls or treat dispensing toys, in the crate, she automatically starts learning that she has fun activity in the crate that calms her. Um, another thing I like to do, crate game wise, is I like to practice the T O U C H Q uh, going in and around the crate. Crate, touch! Yes, good girl! We didn't even have to go all the way in. And then we do it over here. Touch! Yes, good job! And then I'll pair that in. Marlo, crate! Oh, yes, good job! Yay! Release, touch. Yes, good job, I'm slow on a treat. Good job, Marlo. What I like about these games is even if your dog is pretty well crate trained or you're just at the beginning stages, this can add value to everyone because if nothing else, we're teaching our dog to go in the crate, we're teaching them to come out calmly because what I want her to learn is that she's not coming out of the crate until I release her. So an example of that, Marlo crate, yes, good job. And when we shut it, what I like to practice, and I practice this when she's in a calm state, not when I've just come home and she's all excited and wants to come out. I practice is when I open it. Yes, good job. And she offers to stay in there on her own. I'm rewarding that back to back and back. While she continues to maintain this calming behavior, I'm rewarding this. And then she learns that when the crate door is open, it doesn't mean you rush out because I've had this issue, especially with Finn when I was crate training him. Then we practice with it shut. Yes, good job. <laughs> then I continue to still treat her. I also love this crate because it has a top opening latch so I can reward from up here and rewarding her from different angles just 
confirms and verifies the positivity of the crate. Um, and then what I do is I practice opening it just a little bit. Yes! Reward that, so it's because she's not bombarding out. Open it a little bit more. Yes. Some dogs, you'll do this over several days, right? But I'm just kind of showing progression. Nice and slow. Yes. Good girl. Yes, yes, yes. And you can even, if you don't want to over treat, you could use part of their meal time, part of their food that you feed them, doing activities like this. Yes, good girl. Now, to teach her to come out on cue, Marlo, release. Yes, good job. And again, with the release cue, same thing with place. I don't give her treats for that because I want it to be more rewarding to be in there, just like she's offering to go back in. Yes, good girl. I don't have to give her the release cue to come out of the crate unless I've given her the ask or the cue to go in it using the term crate. In order for her to come out, I need to say release. Yes, good job. <laughs> She's so good. She's making so much progress. The treats that I'm feeding, I have a whole list of my favorite treats and dog foods listed on my shop page below, but these are the Becker training bites. I like them because it's literally two ingredients and they're small and crunchy and obviously high value. Yes, get it. Go, go. Um, it's just, uh, these are beef liver. Yep, beef liver with a little bit of ginseng, which can be great for clarity, a little bit of calming, just great overall health. Now, if you want to learn more about potty training a puppy quickly, click the video right here. Or if you wanna learn more about leash skills, click the video right here. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye. <laughs>